On this special edition of Gadget, we're going to show you how to make your YouTube video just a little bit better. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, the place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Palliser of the Society of Jesus. That's the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order of the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology. We've got the air conditioner sort of fixed, so it's not quite so hot. Now, I want to start with a shout out to all the people who have really helped us to make Gadget as popular as it is right now. Counting YouTube, the direct links, and the downloads off the techstop.net, we've received over 3 million views of our 30-some episodes, and we owe it all to you. Thank you for those who have stuck around, who have subscribed, who have sent us messages asking us to review the gear that they love the most. So, again, heartfelt thank you very much. Now, this is a special episode. We're actually going to start a new series here called gadget workshop. It's actually part of gadget. We'll only be doing it every once in a while. But the idea is we've been getting email messages from people who have been using some of the products that we've reviewed, things like the ReadyNAS or like the uh, Netgear EVA 8000. And they've asked for specific items, specific bits of help. Well, we think that as we receive more of these email messages, as we receive more requests to see how it works, we'd like to have a format to sort of give you a step-by-step do-it-yourself instruction manual. And that's where Gadget Workshop comes in. But first, we're going to start with a piece of geekware. We've got, to, <laughs> we've got a very strange piece of geekware from our friends at funfriends.com. Now, these are um, geekware, but they're not for you. They're for your cell phone or your iPod. The idea is that you can slip your cell phone right in here into one of these carriers. It folds over. It gives it a little bit of protection. It gives it this nice little carrying chain so you could hook it onto your belt or onto your bag. And they make these models in uh, several different characters, everything from bears to dogs to my personal favorite, the monkey. And they also make them in the various sizes that you might need for iPods or for other media players that are about the same size format as the iPod. Now, these go anywhere from about $6 to $14, depending on the model that you want and how large it needs to be. And uh, let me be honest, they're not practical. They're not designed to be practical. I mean, this is not something that you're going to buy just to protect your phone. Because if that's all you want, there's plenty of other alternatives out there that will do a much better job. This is designed for people who want something a little bit fun, something enjoyable. I mean, it could be a Christmas gift for a young person, or it could be a gift for someone who's young at heart. Whatever you might choose, and for whatever reason you might buy one of these, they are actually a lot of fun. I've actually uh, taken turns putting them on the phones and the iPods of the interns uh, around the Center for Apostolic Technology. And um, let's just say that the response has ranged from what to, oh my god, that's so cute. So if you, uh, if you like a monkey, if you want a monkey on your phone, if you want a dog on your bag, why don't you go to www.funfriends.com and see if maybe one of these might be for one of the special people in your life. One of the questions I get most often, a request that I receive in email at least once or twice a day, is from people who want to know how we make our videos look right on YouTube. Now, YouTube is fantastic. It's redefined how we look at user-generated content, and it looks very easy to use. But while YouTube is easy to use, it can take a while to master. The content is generally created by amateurs of varying levels of skill behind an editing suite. Some will upload raw video directly from their digital cameras or video phones, while others will use YouTube's built-in titling software. Still others will use a video editing suite to piece together their video. Gadget is put together entirely with Adobe Premiere on a clunker of a workstation. However, no matter how many steps we might take to get our content on YouTube, there are still a few rules that we all must follow. Things like time and file size limits, acceptable formats for video and audio, most of the time, the YouTube software will work just fine and your video will be published clear, crisp, and in sync. Occasionally, however, something is lost in the transfer, and we end up with audio that is out of sync, video that will not play, or image quality that is south of crappy. In this episode of Gadget Workshop, we're going to show you how to create YouTube-ready video using a piece of software that comes free with Windows, XP, or Vista. 
Windows Movie Maker is a rudimentary editing suite. It has a few basic functions, some editing features, and plenty of wizards, but we're not here to review the functionality of the software. Instead, we're going to use it to take a video file from a digital camera and prepare it for uploading to YouTube. Here we have transferred the video clip from the camera to a folder in our desktop. It's an AVI file which plays without difficulty on most Windows and Mac computers, but the audio in the file tends to be out of sync when loaded onto YouTube. The problem is that many digital cameras and camera phones use audio codecs that sacrifice sync for size. The end result is that YouTube, doing its best to convert your clip into an MPEG-4 format, ends up breaking the audio. In this case, we have a 4-second AVI that is 7.44 megabytes large. It has a VBR, or variable bit rate, and the video is 640 by 480. YouTube works best when it receives MPEG-4 files and 320 by 240 resolution. To open the file in Movie Maker, we simply drag and drop it into the collection window of Movie Maker, then drag it from the collection window to the storyboard. Under Movie Task number 3, the first choice is Save to my computer. When you click this link, you will be taken to the Save Movie Wizard. Specify your file name and save location, then click Next. When you reach the Movie Setting window, you will see one of two screens. The first will be a screen with three different selectable buttons for movie quality. This is the screen that you want. The other screen you might see is one that only contains best quality for playback on my computer, and a link below that button that says show more choices. If you see this second screen, click the link to get back to the screen with the three choices. Once there, you want to select other settings, and then click the drop down menu to see the output present. For the best YouTube video possible, choose the high quality, small video selection. You are now ready to convert your video into an MPEG-4 WMV file with a 320x240 resolution. Click Next and Movie Maker will begin outputting your file into its new format. You have to realize that what we're doing now is we are taking the guesswork out of the YouTube conversion. Rather than letting the YouTube software convert your file, no matter what it might be, into an MPEG-4, we're converting it into an MPEG-4 on our end, where we control how the video and the audio looks. We're done. Now if you look at the file that we just created, you will see that it is now the proper resolution, the proper format, and only one half a megabyte as opposed to seven and a half megabytes. You can now go through your normal procedure of uploading the file to YouTube, and you've just given yourself a far better chance of your video looking and sounding the way that you want it to. It really is that simple. Drop your file into Windows Movie Maker, save to my computer, choose the right format, and you're done. Now, I should mention that on some computers, I'm not sure why, uh, Windows Movie Maker has a tendency to crash. Now on this machine, I've never had any problems with it whatsoever. But on my laptop, even though it has all the resources that Windows Movie Maker should need, occasionally it will just bug out. And I'm not really sure why. I don't think it's a Windows thing. I think it might actually be with the design of Windows Movie Maker. If this happens to you, don't fear, don't fret. Just shut it down, turn it back on. Oh, that's Windows Movie Maker, not Windows itself. And try it again. And keep trying it until you finish the file. Now the nice thing is, if you prepare your files this way, if you get them ready to load up to YouTube, you really shouldn't have any syncing problems. Well, I hope that helps for all the people out there who uh, want to put their content up on YouTube. If you want to see more of our episodes, if this has introduced you to Gadget, you can go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. Click on the Gadget tab and you'll be able to find links to all the episodes that we've released so far. If you want to send us an email message, either a comment or if you want to suggest something to do in a future workshop, you can write us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. I've been your host, Father Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology, and there's no uber geek without you.